Now, if we want to uh, go to the second level and let the user go into the transaction but not be able to do certain other things within the transaction. So I'm going to switch to a second user. Um, this is uh, SAP Dev and SAP Dev is also set up in the same way. I'm switching over to show the profile of this user. And when I go into this user profile, you can again see this user also has SAP Auth. So now when I go into this user and get into the employee record and say, let's go into the personal data, you can see that the user is able to go into the transaction, but the user is restricted from viewing certain information in the transaction, such as last name or uh, the full name of the user, the social security number, date of birth. So all these are transaction fields that we have identified and marked as sensitive within this transaction. And so the user is now unable to view this information. Whereas if you go into the same transaction, through a different user, you can see that this user has access to all the information within the transaction. So this is data level protection where we mask certain information within the transaction. And also we can control the information that's being protected in the transaction. Example, if I want to let the employee name um, be visible to the user, I'm just going to go and delete that from my list of sensitive fields. Now, if I go back and run the same transaction, you can see now that the user is able to view the name, which was previously masked. So we can dynamically control the list of sensitive fields within the transaction and also to the user. And we can also make this visible to the user on uh, say a particular context information such as an IP range or a date range. Uh, to demonstrate that, I'll go into uh, the Fury app and uh, run this transaction um, for the business partner. When I do this, you can see that there's certain information within the app that's masked currently for the user. So you, you see that the postal code uh, the telephone number and email ID are being masked for this user. Now, if I go back into the policy, and change the date. Uh, the date that we are talking about here is the range of uh, dates within which the user is not able to view sensitive information. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this from June to May first, which means that the user is now outside uh, the deny date range and should be able to view the information that was previously encrypted. So now when I go back to this user and run the same transaction, and view the same business partner, you can now see that the postal code is not encrypted anymore. And similarly, the email ID uh, is also not encrypted. So we can control it by different context um, attributes such as the date range, uh, the time, or um, the IP address from, the user, uh, from which the user is coming in or the location from which the user is logging in. So different attributes can be used to control um, the information that's displayed in the transaction or um, even if the user is allowed to go into the transaction or not. So different kinds of controls can be placed depending on how the access needs to be controlled. So that is an example of a level one control, which is front door, not allowing the user to go into the transaction or level two where the user goes in but is not able to view certain information within the transaction.